Hey guys, how's it going? Um, not too sure if this is going to be a long video or not. We'll see if I keep on yapping or whatever. Uh, no, I don't want to restart the simulation. Um, wanted to do a commentary or basically, uh, basically a bull session on what I see happening um, in the spring. Of course, um, certain areas where I was hoping to have some conversations or speculation, like honest speculation, nothing, nothing, uh, you know, short of anything else. Uh, of course, different places don't want to speculate, and I think uh, a lot of places, quite frankly, fear this. Uh, they don't want the the whole AI process, or they don't, you know, they they enjoy the human process. The way I see multiplayer and what's coming up for AI is what I envision multiplayer to be. Multiplayer to me isn't about getting a bunch of people together, uh, being buddies and uh, uh, having a community of, of just people who share an interest and a passion. Um, maybe that's me. Maybe that's, I, I guess that could be maybe my, I don't know. I, I, I've never, when I go to a model railroad club, sure I have friends and I say hi and all that, but I don't, I don't come there to talk and talk politics or talk anything other than I'm there to run trains. So this guy here is doing a crew change here, 634, so he's got like 10 minutes. So he's in the middle of a crew change at uh, Barstow here. Sorry. So I'll try to dispatch and do this at the same time. It's probably... You're going to see a few people waiting at signals. Um, but uh, as you can see, this is a, a pretty busy territory. And to have this many people, and yeah, you can have some planned sessions all you want, but to try to get everybody or to please everybody to come on a certain day. I mean, I work shift work. I have my son on weekends. Um, there's a lot of sessions I would love to attend, but I can't. And uh, I have no problem attending other sessions, even though I run my own server. I have no problem, like uh, I have, I have another uh, uh, colleague who runs uh, the Florida server. I haven't been on his server. I think I was on a server maybe, I don't know, about a month or two ago. And I was on like one time. And I think I was there just to check something out, and that was it. And it has nothing to do with not enjoying his server, the work, he's done some great work. Tom has done some great work in Florida, and I, I should have showed you a, a TD3 of uh, uh, the Florida territory because there's a lot of expansion, a lot of uh, um, work that's going to be going on uh, in Florida with uh, Waycross with all the announcements. So there's a lot of things that are coming down the pipe that, quite frankly, I'm looking forward to and I've been eagerly anticipating. And this is why I like to speculate, to try to figure out what it's going to be and to be prepared uh, to know, you know, what to expect. So that's, you know, the whole idea. You look at the needle sub here, and this doesn't look quite like uh, uh, the other one. I got a vehicle train here. I got to get going. Um, but like I said, this guy here, he's working at Cadiz, uh, dropping off some bear tables, uh, so he's going to be there for a while. Um, but what you got to watch, you think the needle sub is boring. This is the this is a needle sub. This is just regular traffic. This was all data that was put in by a, get this guy going once his crew change is done. This was all data that was put in uh, by an actual BNSF conductor for the time period. And it's based on all the data we use. The UP stuff that we have is probably uh, not accurate because he's a BNSF conductor. So the stuff coming off of UP uh, is, is questionable. Um, so keep this guy going. I think he's okay. And then you see I got some signals stacked. I don't know why I got this one. Oh, here we go. That's why. Um, it's hard for me to see the screen, too. It's very because I got eyes. Got a full... Um, big screen TV and everything looks so small so it's hard to see this so 
I'm looking forward to, to, to what uh, what is coming down the pipe, how, how, the, how or if uh, the external dispatcher is going to handle it. I mean, there's so much other things down the road, too. I mean, I've been looking at possibly programming uh, my own dis external dispatcher. Um, I got a lot of, it was a big learning curve for me to, to actually go through and try to figure out what's involved. I know how to program. Uh, I even know how to use some of the older style programming for network programming, but when it comes to the new stuff, that's where I don't have the experience. I, I tend to rely on older technology programs uh, that have been built for the newer generations. Um, basic is one of, is what RTS is written in, and that just that base <laughs> basically it. Okay, so he needs crew here. There you see it says down there, it says crew change, blah, blah, blah. But um, it's an involved process. Now, normally when I would dispatch, I'd go through a cycle of every 15 minutes. But since I'm talking, I figure just keep the traffic going and uh, keep an eye on what's happening. But uh, it's an involved process. I mean, if you look at how many trains I got going on here, three, four, five, six, seven. I count that right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's about 19 trains uh, between, say, Sanborn or just uh, Mojave, I guess, all the way down to just past, uh, just, uh, past Needles. Uh, it doesn't, it, we're not counting the Cajon sub, and we're not counting the other sub for LA, so there's even more traffic that's, that's going to basically need dispatchers. Now the cool thing about RTS is we have at least one person um, who is already said that he's going to dispatch uh, during daytime hours like uh, 9 to 5 or something like that uh, out in uh, uh, Monday to Friday he's, he's going to dispatch whatever he can. Um, I don't think we're going to have 24-7 coverage at least not right away and like I said before, I don't know, you know, I'm not too worried about uh, things being a little bit slower on servers and stuff like that. You know, this is, this is like I said, it's a tool. Uh, AI is a tool. I don't see AI as a way of life. If people don't want to run AI, people don't have to run AI. They can run their own sessions and use totally only humans. When I'm running a train... Like, say, if I'm on uh, the needle sub right now, I mean, this guy, yeah, he's going to be seeing a lot of opposing traffic, but then you got this guy who's coming up and following yellows to, because he's ahead, and this switch will clear itself in a minute because it's stacked. Um, I got two U-trains there. I got uh, UFTH BR, BR1. And, yeah, so I got two steel trains here, and I was able to get the intermodals out of the way. Well, these steel trains have to... One was sitting in Goffs there, and I got to get them out of the way so that the intermodals have a clear passage. And a lot of times they're crossing over. Some of the intermodals will be crossing over, etc. This guy's working at Cadiz, as I said before. He's coming up. Um, so I got a Z train, got a Q train, which is fine as long as I can keep them moving. These should be fine. But uh, there's the challenge right there. I mean, you look at needles as it is right now, uh, most cases you can't have enough humans to justify. And I'm not talking about the old sessions where you would start off. The, old, the, old, the way they used to do sessions, when I, and I, like I said, I've been around from day one. The way they used to do sessions, and I know uh, a lot of the newer sessions have... Uh, been a lot better because they've actually Training got stop, waiting, waiting signal. signal. Oh, okay. That's my... Yeah, well, you see, now, so, so this guy's calling, basically calling me on the radio saying he's got a red signal. Now watch. Uh, he just moved out of the way. The switch will stack itself. You'll see this in a second. I'm not pushing anything. I'm just watching there, see? So, there we go. And, like I said, it's a tool. So for this guy... This makes it very interesting for him because he's not only getting the opposing traffic, but he's also see, also ha having traffic in front of him. 
And all of a sudden, when you're an operator, it isn't so much that there's other humans out there, at least not for me. I mean, I want to be able to run at any time, be able to run a train and expect some type of realistic traffic scenario. Now, the, the problem is I'm going to be running in the evenings, so a lot of times I'm going to be a dispatcher. Now, hopefully, um, I'm going to have times where other, dis other people are going to want to dispatch, which would be really cool. So if you ever wanted a dispatch, and we used to have a lot of demand for dispatchers at RTS, but unfortunately we never had the people. So, and that's something that I see, like I said, it's a tool. It's not about uh, TeamSpeak. And as far as TeamSpeak, what, is it, what do you do in TeamSpeak with all these AI trains? What's the purpose? I mean, I can see, yeah, we have a TeamSpeak channel. I don't even know if it's maintained anymore because none of us use it. None of the regulars use it, I know that, and we're fine with that. Uh, I can't see AIs dimming their headlights while they're going by each other and honking the horn and saying uh, good roll by. I don't think the AI is going to be that powerful, and I certainly don't expect it, nor do I require it. Because all that's really required is to have a traffic. If you remember the MSTS days, for those who ran MSTS or you would run a you would run a simulation and you know if the train didn't smash into you which happened in some activities i remember that uh, or ran red lights but um, if everything worked okay all you did was see a train with full headlights coming at you i don't even know if the headlights worked half the time i think they did some of the newer AIs did but um it didn't matter if they dimmed the headlights or made them look real as long as you had traffic, you got to see different cars, you got to see different signals, different situations. That was what intrigued me. That's what actually, if I'm on any one of these trains, on some of these, like, I mean, you get this guy up here, up uh, going across a desert, well, he doesn't have too much. But then you got over here, I got a train that's coming out of Mojave. You see the green signal behind it. He's heading towards Mojave. There's another guy coming in, so he'll be coming behind him. And then eventually there'll be a meet out in the desert. So the Mojave section isn't as busy. Needles is a very busy section. That's hence why it's double track. There's a reason for it because this is what happens out in Needles. And you get the trains that are climbing the hill. And we all know about uh, trains climbing the hill. It takes an hour just to get the goffs. Sometimes with the proper tonnage, it takes an hour, hour and a half. Uh, it can take as much as two hours sometimes. So we all know about that. Um, that's just one of you know one of those things. <laughs> it's it's realistic railroading. So you know um, the trains have to be run. But if you don't want to run a train out of needles, fine then let the AI run it. That's okay. And that's what I mean. It's a tool. So anybody can take a train whenever they want. I assume I, I assume it would have to stop first do a crew change that would make sense but uh, like I said there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of speculation speculation isn't a bad thing um, but as far as our server goes we have um, a system that generates trains with with the proper way bills cars uh, we have everything in place and we are proceeding ready to embrace this um, I mean, I can run RTS every 24 hours and run a, a, a fresh batch of trains every 24 hours. I don't think I'm going to need to do that. What I'm looking at is probably instead of the 45 to 1, I, I probably see doing a full 24 hours in a week because there's just so much territory and I can't see having a dispatcher in the middle of the night like myself or whatever just running trains with no humans on. That's not the purpose. Although it's fun. I mean, this is okay. So, But anyways, that's my spiel for now. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little commentary. Uh, feel free to leave some comments uh, or whatever. And uh, um, feel free to make the discussion on the forums or whatever you want to do. And we'll talk to you next time.